Guys, today we're going to be reviewing the SMG Adjudicator. This SMG drops from the second encounter of the Prophecy Dungeon. Now, it's returned to us still as a kinetic weapon, but with new traits, as well as the new origin trait. Is the cube encounter one of the more annoying encounters to farm in the Prophecy Dungeon? I think time-wise, yes, which is why this review is really important. Today, we want to answer the question, is Adjudicator worth your time? And keep in mind, everything we're going to go over today, just know, Bungie just released a TWAB this past week stating that Adjudicator, amongst all these other weapons, will retroactively have the ability to have their traits enhanced, starting in the final shape. These are the only weapons currently right now that have been disclosed to get this treatment. Adjudicator is one of those. Now, in terms of SMGs, there is a lot of stiff competition, even in this sandbox for both PvP and for PvE. But even if we just narrowed it down within its own archetype, dude, the competition is fierce. You've got Shayor's Wrath in the energy slot, and then you have Unending Tempest in that top slot. And for my PvE players, you've got things like Callus Mini Tool, Ikelos, the Showrunner, which I personally like. Multimac is also coming back to us. Which, by the way, Multimac is getting enhanced perks too, alongside these prophecy weapons in the final shape. And then when we start talking about exotic SMGs, to say that the competition is stiff is an understatement. Now, breaking things down by its stats, Adjudicator has 56 range at base, which is the second highest, falling behind Shiora's 59. But when we start to look at the other stats, it does fall a bit behind pretty much in every category, whether it's stability, handling, reload speed, airborne effectiveness, aim assist, in even zoom which i know is a stat we don't really talk about much these days because it doesn't necessarily tie to our range anymore after bungie decoupled zoom from our range but it does make a difference and sitting there at 13 zoom let me just say guys it hurts whereas something like unending tempest sits at 14. Shayora sits at 15. And even though zoom doesn't extend the range of your weapon, what it does do is extend that stickiness, that aim assist fall off, the ability to track your targets and maintain some level of like reticle friction, even beyond damage fall off points. And that is something you're going to notice about adjudicator in duels is that you start to see a severe drop off in range outside of its damage fall off. Whereas something like Shayora has the ability to keep maintaining shots at least for a little bit before completely dropping off. Now for my PvE players, I get it. This doesn't really make much of a difference for you, but that zoom of 13 for my PvP players, it's something even I notice. Now, before we get into our perks, we need to talk about its origin traits as it does change how our perks perform ever so slightly. All of our current prophecy weapons comes with the origin trait crossing over. This weapon has increased range and handling for the top half of the magazine, while rounds from the bottom half of the magazine deals increased damage. Now, we're still testing this origin trait as we continue to review these weapons, but think of it like this. Your top half of your mag, or in this case, light, has the highest range and handling. Then as you get lower, that slowly decreases until you hit dark. Then at the bottom half of your mag, it deals more damage, with the damage bonus slowly increasing until you get to your final two shots, which will deal the most damage. Now, these are not crazy stat bumps by any means, but it does help and contributes in a positive way. And also pretty much means at all times, at any point in the magazine, you are getting some tangible benefit. Now, I'm going to start by explaining dark just a bit more. At the top half of our mag, we're dealing 1630 to the body and 2285 to the head against Carl. Then when we enter dark, we start dealing more damage and reach a maximum of 1679 to the body and 2353 to the head. Now, this gives us a 3% damage increase increase. For our light buff, this grants us increased range in handling. In terms of range, we took a 74 range adjudicator and a 74 range Shiora's Wrath. Shiora would cap out at 22 meters and then start to experience damage fall off at 23 meters, whereas adjudicator at 23 meters was still hitting max damage. And it wasn't until 10 shots were fired that the damage started to fall off. But the neat thing about dark, most notably that damage that ramps up, it would start to deal max damage again, which effectively gave us an extra meter of range back. Now, you may not have like that level of stickiness at that range. The point is they both work at maintaining full damage or as close to full damage as you can in their own way. One initially boosting your range, the other boosting your damage. Now, the handling itself is a little harder to calculate. In dark, which gives no handling buff and a handling stat of 21, it takes about 12 frames to fully ADS. And then at the top of light, it takes 10 frames. 
again, nothing that's huge. You're not gonna be like, oh my God, these two frames just won me this duel. I mean, maybe, but it is very slight. At the end of the day, it's a passive buff that's rewarding you at all points in the gunfight. By the way, if you've not checked out Cool Guy, he did an entire video breaking it down, talking about this origin trait and a lot of depth. And we ourselves, even in our own testing, learned a good deal from that. So please check him out. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at our traits. In our third column, we have Dynamic Sway Reduction, Feeding Frenzy, Perpetual Motion, Range Finder, Subsistence, and Threat Detector. For our fourth column, we have Fragile Focus, Frenzy, Kinetic Tremors, Onslaught, Rampage, and Target Lock. Now, I'm gonna talk about PvE players first. The two parts that stand out the most will be Kinetic Tremors and Onslaught. We've been talking about Onslaught pretty much all season, but this is the first SMG to roll with it. Onslaught reads that final blows of this weapon increases its rate of fire, and each kill will increase our rate of fire and also grant us increased reload speed, which is beautiful. Now, this stacks up to three times and lasts for 4.5 seconds. With this being a 600 round per minute SMG, we found the same RPM increases that we got from testing Summoner and Rasaraga. At times one, we're able to ramp up to 716 rounds per minute. At times two, we're able to go up to 842 rounds per minute. And at times three, we're clocking at 960 rounds per minute. Talk about cooking. Then we also have Kinetic Tremors, a personal favorite of mine on Showrunner. It states that sustained kinetic damage to a target emits a shockwave that damages any nearby targets. Now on an SMG, this requires 14 hits in order to proc, and the Tremors will start about 0.285 seconds after scoring enough hits. On a Carl, this deals 11,503 damage per trimmer and goes off for a total of three times. So this is netting you a little less than 35,000 total trimmer damage. Now, the interesting thing about this is the dark part of the origin trait, which get this fellas, increases our trimmer damage. If you cross over into trimmer, as the trimmer is going off, this will give you that small damage buff. And if you continue shooting throughout, you can get them to reach that full extra 3%, which is a pretty neat detail. Now, you do have other perk options. You've got Frenzy, which gives us that 15% damage bonus and maxes out our handling and reload speed after being in combat for 12 seconds. You've got Rampage, which gives us a stacking damage buff, 10% at one stack, 21% at two stacks, 33.1% at three stacks. We also have Target Lock, which keep in mind, did just get a nerf specifically on SMG now requiring 20% of the mag to be fired before the damage buff will kick in, which get this, also applies in PvE. So with Adjudicator here at a base mag of 27, you need to fire six shots. Then target lock will kick in on the seven shots. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of target lock here. I think they're just better options present on Adjudicator. Now, before getting into my god roll, I do want to talk about how Adjudicator performs inside of PvE, as that plays a big factor into my personal god roll. Like I mentioned earlier, at base, Adjudicator is dealing 22 85 to the head against Carl. Then when we enter dark, we start dealing more damage and reach a maximum of 2353. Now this gives us a total damage value of 62,406 if we're landing all crits. And this is at a base mag of 27. And yes, this does take into account our dark damage. Now this roughly gives us a DPS value of 24,002. Now, let me just say, it's not the worst DPS value, but when we start comparing it to other SMGs, you start to see it lag behind. Not only that, you've got the low mag size, you've got the slow reload speed. These things start to pile up. Compared to our other SMG archetypes, an aggressive SMG has a DPS value of 25,113. An adaptive SMG has 25,005 DPS. Lightweight SMGs have a DPS of 26,578. And this lines up with SMGs I tend to use in PvE, mainly being our fast firing ones. Those being lightweights and occasionally adaptives with a dabble in aggressives. Now, what about things like Onslaught and Target Lock? Is it able to bridge that gap? Well, if you're rocking Onslaught and you do get up to times three, you fire those 27 shots extremely fast. This pumps up our DBS to 38,215, but that's at 100% optimal. Now listen guys, I love Onslaught. It's an incredibly fun perk. It's just considering the mag size of Adjudicator, dude, it just feels weird. I feel like half the time I'm just reloading. You tear through ammo so fast. Now, are you also pumping a ton of damage in the enemies? Yes, and there are ways in which you can help yourself with this. You can roll subsistence, which will feed ammo back into the weapon when you get kills. But the thing you're gonna be met with with Adjudicator, that's my biggest complaint, is that reload speed. It just feels awful. Now you can pair Onslaught with Feeding Frenzy so that each rapid kill with this weapon progressively increases reload speed for a short time. And this stacks up to five times, granting you 100 reload speed and a 0.8 reload duration multiplier. 
And considering Onslaught is also granting us increased reload speed, this does help. I also try and add a threat detector roll, which of course gives you a ton of benefits when it's procced, reload, stability, handling. At times two, you're granted 40 stability, 60 reload speed, 100 handling, and that 0.81 times handling animation duration multiplier. This did help. But again, if you're rocking this with Onslaught, dude, you just chew through ammo really fast. And I think this kind of just falls into the discussion of what it is you're trying to tackle. If it's at level content, then by all means, Onslaught is completely fine. Or even if it's something like legend difficulty. But obviously in GMs, when you start to run into meteor targets, it's so difficult to get multiple stacks of Onslaught and then keeping those stacks. I love Onslaught on auto rifles. I love it on Summoner. I love it on Rasarago. But personally, guys, I'm just not feeling it on SMGs. Now, we also tried our Kinetic Tremor Roll. Which again, I mentioned I liked it on Showrunner, and I also like it here on Adjudicator. With Kinetic Tremors, this increases our total damage to 97,420, and our DBS value goes up to 37,240. Now, keep in mind here that the Tremor damage can be increased by being in dark, but also the target that you're hitting, for instance, Carl here, needs to be in the center of the Tremor in order to deal its full damage. So, tests may vary but this would be the optimal trimmer damage for both total and DPS. Now, this is personally what I like the most on Adjudicator. I found it to be the most consistent, especially against higher health targets, and it's something I can bring inside of GMs. You can apply trimmer damage when you're out of range, as long as you're tagging the target. And you could still go a subsistent kinetic trimmer roll, or even a feeding frenzy, threat detector with trimmers. All of those still synergize fine. Now, is Adjudicator gonna be a top choice PV weapon for me? I don't know, guys. I'm curious to see enhanced onslaught as well as enhanced kinetic tremors. Personally, I'm just not a fan of this archetype inside of PvE. There are other archetypes that just stand out to me more. But again, if you like Adjudicator, by all means, use it. With that being said, let's talk PvP. With this weapon being a 600 round per minute SMG, in the new sandbox, you're looking at a 0.8 time to kill value. This means at tier 10 resilience to tier 6, you're going to be scoring a kill in 8 crits in one body. At tier 5 resilience, all the way down, you're able to achieve that in 7 crits to body. And again, the health pools here, guys, have changed. We're now between 216 and 230. Now, because we have dark presence, this moves the needle ever so slightly. Again, that damage buff starts at the bottom half of the magazine and will ramp up to that 3% mark. But at tier 10 to tier 9 resilience, you're able to get the kill in 8 crits in one body in 0.8 seconds. But at tier 8 resilience to tier 6, you're able to get the kill in 7 crits to body. Now, you need to have at least one shot out of dark. For example, you hit dark at 13 shots with a base mag of 27 and get a resilience check at 8. If you're at 12 shots, though, that's left in the mag, it will kill that tier 8 in 7 crits to body. Now, if you were to be in the final 10 shots or less of Adjudicator, you're able to get the kill on Guardians, tier 5 resilience or below in 8 crits, 0.7 seconds. Now, what about target lock? Even though target lock got a nerf, here on Adjudicator, it has its uses. From tier 10 resilience to tier 7, you're able to get the kill in 7 crits to body in 0.8 seconds. At tier 6 resilience, you're able to get the kill in 8 crits in 0.7 seconds. And then combining target lock with our dark buff, at tier 10 resilience, you're able to get the kill in 7 crits to body in 0.8 seconds. At tier 9 resilience, all the way to tier 3, you're able to get the kill in 8 crits, 0.7 seconds. And at tier 2 resilience and below, you're able to get the kill in 7 crits crits, one body, and 0.7 seconds. Look, I know, it's a number game. No one's really going to go into a duel and pre-fire down to the final 12 shots of their SMG. But what this does give you the opportunity is to go from target to target. And instead of like going, oh, I need to reload in between these duels, you may just want to just feed into that dark buff. But this also takes us to the feel of the weapon. Guys, there are times where I'm using Adjudicator and I love it. I'm like, wow, this thing is popping off. And there are other times where I'm using it and I'm like, you know what? I just don't like the way this thing feels. Now, I've mentioned before that it may be due to the fact that it has 13 zoom. That contributes to it. Maybe not in terms of range, but in terms of that reticle stickiness and that aim assist fall off, it makes a difference, especially for my controller players. At a base of 56 range, you start to experience damage fall off at 19.52 meters. And if you were to have a max range roll of 81, you start to experience damage fall off at 23 meters. Again, this is with light buff being active. Now, listen, this is highly competitive. I mean, when you compare this to a max range Shiora's Wrath. Shiora, and it's a depth form. 
with everything helping its range, including full bore, which I don't recommend, can hit up to 23.52 meters. And if we were to take something like Immortal and it's a depth form with 90 range, full bore, keep away active, we're talking 22.6 meters. So Adjudicator has got the reach. And then on top of that, we have perks like Onslaught, which at just a single stack of Onslaught drops our time to kill to 0.67 seconds. Two stacks, 0.57 seconds. Three stacks, 0.5. Now, it's a good chance you're not going to get up to three stacks, but I'm sitting here wondering how nasty is this going to be when we have the enhanced versions of these traits. And in a perfect world, if I had Hammer Forge, Accurize Rounds, Dynamic Sway, and Onslaught for PvP with the ranged masterwork, uh, that's disgusting. And then we have crossing over in that light buff, extending our range even further, and that dark buff buffing our damage on the bottom half. It's a match made in heaven. But let me just say this about Adjudicator. It feels weird to use. I don't know what it is about it, but guys, the weapon just feels strange. It's a preference thing. But I want to say the thing that throws me off about Adjudicator is its gun model. You see, I don't know what it is. It has like this sloping down gun model, which throws me off. Like when you look at Shayura, it's very flat. Unending Tempest, also very flat. But guys, I know this is a preference thing, but Adjudicator's gun model, for some reason, when I'm sitting there watching it in action, it just throws me off. And if anyone else is running into this issue, please let me know, because I feel crazy in even saying this. But it is something that I've picked up and something that just poses an issue for myself. Now, the more I play with Adjudicator, the more I get used to it, like with all weapons. Now, with all that being said, what is the gun roll? I'm actually gonna bring up something that many of you probably didn't think we we're gonna talk about. I know Onslaught is a big focus in that final column. There's some people out there that may try to make target lock work, which I wouldn't recommend, but there's another perk that's fantastic in that final column. Fragile Focus. This weapon gains bonus range until your shield is destroyed. The bonus returns once your shield is regenerated to full strength. Now, guys, I know Fragile Focus may not be your go-to perk, but it grants you 20 range while your shields are active. The reason why that's so good in the sandbox is because the health pool increases we have gotten here recently, meaning you have more shield. Not by much, but you have a bit more wiggle room there to take advantage of perks like Fragile Focus. In my opinion, the god roll would be small more. Accurize round dynamic sway reduction, fragile focus, and really guys, whatever you want for that masterwork. You're already sitting at 93 range and 47 stability before we even start talking our masterwork. You could do a handling masterwork if you want to, which this weapon desperately needs. You could do a stability masterwork. But let me go over a few reasons why I think this is going to be the go-to SMG in that kinetic slot when we get enhanced perks. Number one, Enhanced dynamic sway reduction not only improves accuracy and stability while continuously holding the trigger, but rapidly improves accuracy and stability. That means each shot while holding down the trigger will grant not just one stability, but 1.25 stability. And instead of that minus 5% accuracy cone size and that minus 10% accuracy cone growth, instead, it'll be minus 6.25% accuracy cone size and minus 12.5% accuracy cone growth. And here's the kicker. Instead of it requiring 10 shots to reach maximum strength, enhanced dynamic sway will require eight shots. TLDR on dynamic sway reduction here, guys. In its enhanced form, it activates even faster. Well, what about Fragile Focus? Again, Fragile Focus grants you that 20 range in its base form and will reactivate one second after your shield's fully recharged. In its enhanced form, it reactivates even quicker. Instead of it being one second, it's now 0.5 seconds, meaning you have less downtime there for Fragile Focus to be active. And I know we have Onslaught and we still don't really know what enhanced Onslaught is gonna look like. Target Lock may even be worth the play in its enhanced form, but in my opinion, the reason why you would use a 600 round per minute SMG is for its ability to reach, having that range. Fragile Focus, despite this weapon having 13 zoom, still gives it the ability to have that reach, rivaling and even surpassing Shiora. Now, are there moments outside of damage fall off where the weapon literally hits nothing? Absolutely, and it's noticeable, which is why I wanna give this weapon as much reach as possible. Now, could you do Fragile Focus with other perks, things like Perpetual Motion or even Threat Detector? Considering Threat Detector is a really good one, as it increases reload stability and handling when enemies are in close proximity, you get a number of benefits, but the enhanced version of it gives you even more benefits. Just a single stack of Threat Detector gives you 19 stability and 25 handling. And at two stacks, it's 44 stability and 100 handling and an increase there in reload of 63. The point I'm trying to get here, guys, is you really can't go wrong here with any of these options. And with the ability to retroactively enhance these perks, 
Adjudicator, like the rest of the prophecy weapons, are looking to be some of the best weapons we have ever had in the game. Now all that's left is for me to get over this weapon's gun model and just learn how to aim properly with it. I don't know, guys. I know, it's a personal thing. Maybe it's the sound of the gun. Something about Adjudicator just throws me off. With that being said, there have been many duels that I have won with Adjudicator that I feel other SMGs would have struggled with. I think this weapon rivals Unending Tempest. And with us also getting enhanced traits here, it's about to be a standout SMG in that top slot. So guys, Guys, that is our review here for Adjudicator. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you haven't checked out our other reviews, we've done one for Prosecutor and these other Prophecy weapons, feel free to check that out. We're continuing to go down the list of all these weapons as these are going to be substantially powerful in the final shape. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.